I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Welcome back, everyone. I am the Dungeon Master, and this is Dragons of Starfall. Tonight, we rejoin the heroes as they have just awoken from a restful night uh, with the farmers at the small little, I mean, it's not even a village or a hamlet or a burg or anything like that. It's, uh, it, it's barely, you know... Uh, a whole family it's like you know 10 to 12 people living on a on a couple of acres of farmland and just doing the best they can and you guys saved them from what would for sure be a a thin winter if they if they lost all of their crops to these dinotherium and so driving them off having Tusky come in and just floor that one. He like ran right into him, knocked him to the ground. And, and the okay. triple crit. Don't yeah. The triple crit. Oh yeah. The triple crit from Arn. That was crazy. Wait, was that Arn? Yeah. yeah. I forgot yeah, that, about that. Yeah, that was Arn. He, he almost killed it in one shot. He drove his sword through its belly, eviscerating it. And so, um, you know, you guys kicked some ass, but now you realize as you wake up in the morning, uh, those bodies are still there. Weighing like, you know, double digit tons, something in like the low, the high 20s to low 30s, if I'm not mistaken. What were to happen if we just let it rock right. there? There I would figured be, the farmer would clean his mess. There would be like 25 plus tons of rotting meat. It'll attract predators too. It's carrion. Well, our job was to... Well, we didn't, we didn't really have a job, but we cleared it out. Now, you do have a job. Up, Darren I don't Grace know if guy, I was hired for that. Darren yeah. Grace guy reminds you that you guys are fucking on a schedule. Yeah, the 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 freaking uh, guide we're going with. We gotta just get going. Sorry, guys. Uh, good luck with the dinosaurithium or whatever. Can Electo dispose of the corpse somehow? Some kind of magic or fire? Can we can we just light it on fire? Yeah. What the heck? Well, uh, uh, there's a bunch of people here. They can dig a grave. 
Yeah, well, and when what push it into it, like it's it weighs like everything underneath. They fall into it and bury it with dirt. They could Did just they set it fall on fire. On the crops, though. No, it died over by the house. The other one ran off after me. Right, right. There's only one there. Yeah, one's I, right next to the house. I look at the the people and I say, "Well, we saved your farm, but we we have to head off. We really are on a tight schedule. Um, harvest whatever you can. You know, call everybody you know, harvest it, and uh, burn the rest." Chop that crap up. Oh, okay. So sorry, we can't do anything about it. Yeah, so call the neighbors to help you. You can share the bones and marrow and whatever else you can get. They're tusks. That must be worth something if it's got. We're we're just we're just supposed to like deal with this like eight foot tall pile of of elephant. Yep. I don't know what you expect us to do. I mean, I don't. I don't know. Didn't you well, have? We really, didn't you have a guy who was into eating things? Uh, no. How do you know well, about no, that? We got a, we got a uh, griffin for that now, so we're gonna have to take some of the meat. Other than that, I'm assuming we did already. I, can we add like some rations to our thing just for picking up meat? Because I assume we chopped off a few steaks, right? We we had to. I have some survival skill. I think. I believe we used it for dinner last. night. Yeah, definitely. We ate it. It wasn't that good. Very gamey. It would be super chewy. It's yeah, nice. all muscle. We had elephant jerky once. It was horrifying. Oof. You were chewing but for those three are like, days. Those are like super angry elephants, though, so they're probably pumped full of uh, musky hormones, too. They're like angry. Gross, gross. gross, yeah. gross. That's what they are. They're angry elephants. They're not. They're like a. They're not peaceful. The ones we killed are not peaceful. They were not. They're, no, they're worse than elephants. They, they were very were, hungry. They were worse than elephants, but they're also voracious. Exactly. Yeah, they were very hungry, and they were like, "Ah, eh, fuck these guys. We're gonna eat all their vegetables." They're not polite. Very rude elephants. Dinosaur elephants. Yeah, so uh, sorry, man. We we got to get going. Uh, like right now, I I look at my uh, my gauntlet. There's no watch, but I look down at it and I say, "We really got to get going." Sorry. Yeah, I look up at the sun, lick my finger, hold it up. Yeah, you quick set up a sundial and be like, oh, "We got to get going." Is it three o'clock? Jesus. <laughs> no, it's it's like you know seven in the morning, six thirty. Yeah, dude, sun's coming up. We got to get going. Sorry. I think calling your neighbors is the best idea. I can't help but notice you're trying to walk away right now. Any chance you were going to help me clean the shake stew out of my pool? All right. Thanks. Watch your back. It's from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Oh, uh, oh, man. Shake kills himself in this dude's pool and, and uh, the roommate walks away and he's like, aren't you going to help me? He's like, okay, watch your back. Dude, that, that show. I never liked it. It was too much for me. It was uh, kind of a... it, is, it is a bit much. But if, yeah, you, if just... you can get past the bit much, it's genius. It gives me anxiety watching it. <laughs> I bet. I bet. There's some episodes that give me anxiety, and I, I actually like enjoy it. But yeah, no, it's... <laughs> It's a bit much. It is. No no, no question there. But if you can get past that, it's actually pretty genius. Yeah. Well, sorry, dude. Uh, I look at the guide and I just nod and I say, we're ready to go. Let's get on the, the wagon and get out of here. Uh, have your elephant, like, drag it away or something, dude. Like, come on. You guys are assholes. You just, you just kill this elephant and then just leave it to rot on my doorstep? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That is accurate. Sorry, Thanks. dude. We we killed it, man. You, we're not going to do everything. You Thanks know? for we're doing business go. with Heroes Incorporated. Here's our card. <laughs> yeah, it refers to uh, somebody else. You get ten dollars off your next uh, your next visit. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I tagged their house. Your next elephant. emergency. Yeah, we don't we don't do the cleanup. We're not those guys. Call somebody else. You you tagged her house with what? The elephant logo. I've been painting. Oh, that's right. You did. You did make the elephant yeah. logo on there. Damn. Um, we're we're in the adventurers guild, not the waste management guild, and we, we don't want to cross the picket lines like that. Part of the adventurers guild oath, though, is that you will you will help 
you know, as many people as possible along your, your journey. Uh, I mean, it's, really it's more of it's more of what you'd call guidelines, really. You know, it's not like it's not like rules. It's not like yeah, they, laws. It's not like they audit you or anything. You know, like you know, oh, we heard that you guys didn't clean up an elephant. That's like three points off. You know, it's not like it goes like that. You know. Thank God, because I don't keep receipts. <laughs> but it's just like you know, it's kind of like you know. As a hero, I will, you know, defend the innocent, like a like a knight's oath, but like a little more vague because it allows for, you know, a lot of different um, viewpoints on what constitutes things. As long as at the end of the day, it's agreed upon in general that you like did some good and tried to help people. Yeah, hey, Lecto, can you do anything to this freaking elephant so we could just get out of here? Can you light it on fire? If you think lighting on lighting it on fire would work, I tried looking and I didn't see anything that would obviously make a big difference. I could shatter it and make it into many tiny pieces. <laughs> Just have it explode in chunks all over the place. Oh my god, that would be amazing. And it's easier for them to move. It would. It would. Be <laughs> I don't know if they'll see it that way. And, and I just want to be clear as a DM to you guys as players that in no way, shape, or form must you clean up this mess. I, I, I was just telling you, like, in the world, like, the way the Adventurers Guild looks at things is, like, every opportunity to help someone is a part of your journey as an adventurer. Yeah, so that makes sense. I'll, I'll try shattering it. We'll just see what happens, I guess. Oh, God, no. This is going to be such a mess. I'm going to go duck. Yeah, no, no, no. Gary, I'm sorry, but no, no, no. That's a bad idea. He's going to get pissed she, off. She, go, she oh. goes all... Uh, dragonborn on it and Fusrada! and just the corpse of the dinotherium ruptures and uh because it was sliced open so thoroughly by uh just the blood thinner by um by um arn with his great sword i mean really let's be honest it's not that great but uh, it's actually a long sword, by the way. Oh, oh now, now he's got to talk about length. Like you compensating for something? So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call it that. So, any, anyway, uh, slicing the beast open with his long sword uh, left it exposed, and when your shatter hits it, not only does it break apart its spine and legs and you know stuff like that, but it sends the intestines flying all over the cottages and people gathered around but electo's done this before and knew to stand close enough to where basically it's like it created this wall of pressure around him and everything exploded and on everybody else Nice. I'm, oh, okay. I nod my head and say fertilizer and then turn to walk away. The skull is uh, now like, it's still got flesh on it, but like there's just a skull of the dinotherium laying there. And then I salute the, the, the farm, uh, the farm guy <laughs> and, uh, we leave, we, we walk away. Yep. We're on the road again. So Darren's like, good Lord, that took you guys long enough. And you sent chunks flying so far. Look at this. It's on the fucking carriage. Like, you just made this wagon into a carriage, and now we got dinosaur elephant guts all over can, it. Uh, yeah, I can all of at this point. Can Dragos just press the digitation us? I'm sure he could do it a few, oh, a, a few times. I'm sure he could. I'm happy to do that. Let's get on the road. Oh, man. Good. I thought that was going to leave a smudge. Look at this. I actually, I wanted to uh, point out, because I know you guys have used this spell a lot. The spell is, I believe, an illusion spell. So you're not actually clean. You just clean. <laughs> so you're still as dirty as you've been all this time. It's just Okay, so um, as far as I've understood it, and now, granted, this is leaning heavily upon my studies of it from 3.5 and not from 5th edition. So perhaps they did change the wording of it in 5th edition, but my understanding of prestidigitation was that it covered a whole lot of minor effects 
and that though none of them could deal actual damage, that some of them were in fact real effects, such as lighting a candle or blowing it out with gusts of air. That you weren't creating the illusion of it, you were literally lighting it. It's transmutation, yeah. it's not illusion. And you, you, it does let you clean and uh, do small, like, pickup stuff. So. Right. I totally agree. I actually yeah, I, ruled in my game when I DM that it was that it worked the way you were using it. I just wanted to point it out because I actually played with two rules lawyers who made a thing of it because that's what I'd always right. been. No, it's not illusion. Yeah, no, my, my understanding was always that it was able to create minor effects. And in this case, I would say that, you know, turning into a, a little uh, wiper and wiping some uh, goo off of the carriage is, is totally within the realm of 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 what prestidigitation is made for basically anything not covered by another spell that doesn't have any sort of combat benefit is prestidigitation so we're cool, good Let's... Cool. just wanted to make i wasn't sure 100 percent yeah and and again this is relying on 3.5 lore for me so it is entirely possible that fifth edition changed shit up but pff. Yeah. You know. Oh, you know what? The contention came in with the duration because it has a duration. Oh. It fades. Oh, in in that so, case, uh, yes. But see, that's the thing. Like, it can fade, but once a candle is lit, it's lit. Once a candle is blown out, it's blown out. Like, it's not going to just relight after you know a a moment because the gust of wind, you know, is no longer in yeah, effect. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, like, the goo isn't going to come back. He He's already wiped it off. I, I would like to be clear, though, that when you do the prestidigitation cleaning, it does not magically, like, uh, erase these things from existence. It, like, literally separates it from you and drops it to the ground. In, like, a neat little pile. It instantly clean or spoil an object. So, no larger than a cubic foot, which means I have to do it dozens of times, but I can still clean the cart. Right. And just that we're clear, you know, it's not making things disappear because that would be a hugely powerful cantrip to have to where if I covered you in chaos slime for you to be able to be like, oh, I just pressed a digitation that shit out of existence. Like you, you might be able to press the digitation it off of you. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it still exists. It's still a dangerous, chaotic slime that is now at your feet just lying there in a puddle. All right. I just wanted to make sure because I always thought that it was just an illusion, but you're right. It's I'm I'm perfectly cool with that ruling. I like it better that way. Cool. That's how it works. Hey, anybody else got a problem with that ruling? Huh? Zero. Huh? You got a fucking problem with it, you players? No, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. Not well, not at all. Here. I love the illusionary image thing. That little where you can make like a symbol, or I really like that part of it. So that's pretty cool. Right. It can cover minor illusions as well. Basically, uh, David Copperfield and, and David Blaine and shit like that, they, they're using prestidigitation to do all that shit. Most of it. I, sure I, you I guess if you float too. the Statue of Liberty, that's not prestidigitation. Yeah, just make sure you get my back. I, I got the stuff down my shirt. Oh, yeah, you guys are there for, like, a while as you, like, you know, have them clean it all off. You get it out of your hair. It's, like, in your hair. Oh, it just stinks. Who wishes they were bald now? Oh! Not me, what the heck? Uh, I'm going to have some in there for, like, a week now. It's going to take forever to get it out. By the way, Tusky shoves his way to the front of the line. All right, Tusky, lead us to victory. No, I, get me clean. Oh. <laughs> Stomps his foot. Boom, boom. I'll take the time to clean everything and let's get moving. All right. Fast forward. You can let's clean fast forward. 30 minutes. Back. Oh, no, you got the griffin. Never mind. You got the griffin to take you ahead. Oh, yeah. And the we'll griffin wasn't, wasn't like just hanging out by that. He was, she was off uh, hunting some horse meat. She didn't get any, but that's what she wanted. All right, what happens next? All right, so you guys continue on the road west. 
and as you are traveling you see well-worn wagon tracks digging into the road creating a huge well it's like it's like a train track you know to where you're just like stuck in the in the grooves and you have to just like go along with the with the path this road has been traveled so many times over untold centuries and the wheels are so deep in at places that the the ground can be heard to scrape against the bottom of the of the carriage uh, I'm gonna ask Darren how how far are we from when you were attacked last time uh, about eight eight days out from here okay good I'll send my uh familiar out to scout around and keep an eye out I'm pretty sure my passive is pretty good. I think I have a 14. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, just for keeping an eye out. I think my passive is 14. My passive. Is 14. Oh, okay, yeah. I love the freaking imp that could turn into a hawk. Okay, so... As you guys are scouting out ahead, uh, you 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 see other travelers, many many other travelers, people walking, people uh, on horseback, and they're just you know coming and going down the old King's Road, and uh, they they pass you by. So some of them, you know, take the path to either side of you heading in the opposite direction. Some of them ride past you on their swift horses as your cumbersome elephant has to take, you know, extended breaks. Very dangerous over short distances, but but they're they're wasted in a marathon. So uh Zima is like forced to like fly circles and, and you know needs to land frequently then as well because she's using up so much more energy to keep this slower pace but walking speed for a griffin is like a joke i'm pretty sure it's like 20 feet or some shit like that yeah they hop like chickens yeah, I'm I'm looking right now because I forget. Oh, they do have a thirty foot walking speed. It's just they're fucking ultra mega fast in the sky. Okay. Oh, that's pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah, thirty foot. Okay. Not like that, a horse, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I guess yeah, Zima can pretty much just walk and keep up with uh, anybody who's walking while you guys are walking, and then. Well, Tusky is able to keep his 40 foot speed, which, as I was just saying, is not every round. Cause yeah, yeah, he has to take it easy on the roads and stuff. Right, right. Like, yes, he can move 40 feet. He's he's good at the speed, but like in shorter bursts, you know, he's not walking 40 feet around for you know the entire time you guys are traveling here. That's ridiculous. So, um. Anyway, you know, Zima walks along a little, a little more gracefully than you would expect. And then every so often just like takes to the air, stretches her wings, uh, gets a little bit ahead, glides, you know. And uh, every so often when she comes down, she veers off violently to the left or right and... Uh, comes up with a rabbit or a jackalope, as would be common in this area. 
apex predator, man. Oh yeah, I mean not not really, really, but like for the types of beasts that you find typically around here, like they're they're one of the top predators. You know, there are a few like legendary monsters that would like definitely just eat a a griffin for for dinner like but, the legendary river turtle yeah well um but also like the rock you know dwayne yeah, johnson what has to consume like six thousand calories a day to maintain muscle mass dude what, what's he cooking <laughs> <laughs> oh you can't smell it so, <laughs> uh, anyway uh damn you <laughs> he uh like the rock you know the giant bird they they would uh eat a griffin no problem uh or tusky um but those are like not seen typically uh in addition there are some land predators like you guys know since like dinosaurs exist and all of that like obviously some of the uh tyrannosaurus rexes and all of that like a griffin doesn't want any piece of that but uh t-rex can't fly last time i checked so you know fuck out of here with that move speed what are you <laughs> 80 feet Phew, i'm out of here so uh t-rex ain't got nothing on a griffin unless they somehow ambush them so apex predator with a asterisk okay so these guys that uh, rode past us, uh, they didn't really look. Sorry, sorry, they didn't really look back at us or anything. They just kind of kept going. Oh man, like a bunch of them check you guys out and are like, "What's going on with that uh, griffin and elephant and those people riding it? Like they look like fucking adventurers and and uh, ruffians." Yeah, by the way, we do look fucking sick, by the way. We have an elephant that's pulling a, or that's riding next to a wagon pulled by horses. And then we have a griffin, and you have a, like, a big armored dude, uh, obviously a wizard, uh, this like nobly looking guy, and this drunken monk. We look like a ragtag group of heroes, definitely. Yeah. Did you see the did you see the outfit I posted with the new shit I bought? Oh, oh man. I am so sorry everything that was going on today. I didn't get a oh, chance course, to I upload no, it. No. I I have the I have the token saved and I all I had oh. to do was upload it and and I like I said, I literally just got home like right then and Oh no, I just meant like if the other guys have seen it, if everybody saw when I posted it. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it right Logan, now. It's Logan sick. cleaned himself up. So, but Sans it, knife. It got serious in water. Yeah. Sans knife, it's just replaced with a gauntlet, like a doom fist. Yeah, I still got that doom fist, that big ass. I'm going to uh, try and Photoshop yeah. that on there, too. How did, um, how, um, like, why did you switch up? Like, what, what was up with, uh, like, did you gain a new insight on life by the events in water end? Yeah, and I had to learn how to use some better weapons. My fists aren't always going to work in every situation. Yeah, I'll teach you some sword, some sword skills in a way. I'll teach you how to hold it, because I saw you swing yesterday, and um, you kind of swing used, like a girl. I used, <laughs> rever- I used the reverse grip. It's not as strong, but I, I feel it's more versatile. Oh, well. Whatever I do does pretty good, so if, if you want to learn that, just let me know. It just reminds me of that scene in Community where they're teaching Jeff to fight. What are you, an Asian seamstress? Well, not if that's a bad thing. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So uh, as as you guys, you know, do this, they they eye you up. Uh, Most of them, like, with a mix of awe and, like, wariness. Like, you, you get a lot of people who, like, won't meet your gaze. Like, they stare at you, and then they quickly look away when, when they you see you look. I say, we're pretty sweet, huh? Uh, when you say that, it, it happens to be as a man is pulling a, a wagon and a... Um, bunch of uh of uh 
turnips in his in his cart that he's pulling with his daughter a a young ish not like not minor is not turning this into something gross but you know she's young and and uh she hears you say that and she just like giggles uh, at, at it because uh you know sweet is not a a word that men would use you know typically and and uh so she she like starts giggling Arn grew up with uh, some very some very strong females. He's he's good with his feet, with his uh, like emotional side. He's not afraid to use words like sweet. He's not afraid of his. He's not afraid of his uh, of maintaining his masculinity. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, he, that, he's he's just looking at him. He's fucking masculine. All right. He's, yeah, he doesn't have to prove. He that, doesn't have to prove anything. That that that's what I've said my whole life is like. I don't have anything to prove to anyone. I'm not trying to have sex with what my sexuality is. So, you know, you could think whatever you want to think or do whatever you want to do, because if I'm not trying to do you, what's it to you? You That that's how I've always, you know, uh, approached things. So yeah, like I've never had a problem with verbiage. I'm just letting you know in this setting, in this, you know, time frame, like, words like sweet and and sugar and you know like little nicknames like that are like the purview of like the more feminine species you know that's true i i, I did forget that but hey uh, hey i'm just i'm just trying to set a tone that's all i you know yeah i appreciate it's, it's, it's 2021 we're we're all you know on board with with female empowerment so i mean if I have to have a, a female badass come in here and whoop all of you to prove it, I will. But Carrie seems to do a good enough job of showing you guys up most weeks. So, <laughs> dang. <laughs> anyway, dang, dang. Jesse knows. Yeah, they they all know. Yeah. It's just it's just fun to point it out in moments like that. You know, it's not like we've ever brought it up before, but you know, that moment seemed to call for it. So. <laughs> I hate most of the water ran is the stupid sexism. I think that was the thing that got Logan the most and hate that place. Yeah. It's backwards. Well, you know, I mean, you're talking about a town that borders like a medieval Arabian kind of themed country. And so, you know, kind of like uh, Alexander the Great, you know, when he got to the, to the Middle East and India and all of that, you know, like, I mean hashish is a hell of a drug i heard where electro's from is anything goes in the spice dens or smoke dens or whatever they have there oh i mean yeah plus magic oh true what was uh i see the witch there with the women it's fake as hell but the wizard adam <clears throat> you were kind of breaking up there what was that oh you guys saw the witcher where he had the wizard had all those women in his Oh, fake illusion. Oh, oh no! I I have never checked out The Witcher. Uh, I watch it. It's hard for me to sit through, but I watch it for the podcast. Yeah. Well, uh, so anyway, you know, all of the people passing you by are a mix of like low class peasants, all the way up to like official, um like knights of the various like towns uh are stationed around here and like so you'll see like uh, a regiment of like 10 or or you know a small patrol of like five you know every so often um because i'm describing days worth of travel here you know yeah we're, we're just we're just we're just slogging through, man. We're just trying to get through this job. Maybe we can get some money. Maybe we can get some. Um, we just need more resources. Like right now, we have us, but we don't have like much of a um, much of a mission, much of a plan yet. Like this water and stuff was our mission, but we're just kind of lost now. So. Oh yeah, no, I I hear you a hundred percent. I mean, right now your exact mission, as you know, is to follow Darren Gray Sky to the ambush sites and recover. Uh, lord fuck i forget his name here uh his 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 shit uh and and bring it back 
Uh, oh, Mac. No, that's not Maxius. Maxius is the other dude. Oh, fuck. What was the Lord that you're recovering the ship for? I'll have to watch a previous episode and, and uh, try to find that. Um, but anyway, you guys need to cover recover his possessions if possible, or at the very least, figure out what the who who took his shit so that he can like exact some revenge. I mean, he's got he's got some dudes who will do violence for him if he needs them to, and like he just needs to know who to direct this violence at. And Darren Grace guy has gone uh, once with all his stuff, got robbed. And twice with two different groups of, of adventuring heroes and like they got ambushed and separated and like he's pretty sure they're dead. But like, you know, he just ran. So he don't know. I try a perception check on this guy just to see if he's around looking shady during the days that we're traveling just to keep an eye on him. Well, would that, that would, be an insight or I was going to say that would be insight. OK, I, I can do insight. I just always ask for my best skill first. Of course. Uh, insight. But you can't trick me. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> no, I actually got proficiency in that. Wow. That's nice. Okay, hold on. Thank God you got proficiency in that because that was a less than standard roll. Anyway. Yeah, happy with that. Anyway, uh, a 15 lets you see that this guy. There's something up with this guy. There's, there's like. You're 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 looking at this guy and you're like you do not seem like the kind of guy who like would just go back into the battle where you just got robbed your like whole crew they they killed the other guards with the stuff took all the stuff you somehow managed to escape with your life, fine. But then twice you go back into it, twice the other guys get fucking fucked up, and you're willing to do it. You're willing to do it again, and like you're just so you're both a a coward, a weakling, whatever. But you're also brave enough to go back in a fourth time. You know, like yeah, we're, we just need to keep playing along. I mean, we know there's something weird going on, but we don't know, so we just have to. We talked to the last week. We talked to the other guys with us, and they said he had a reputation of being very brave. Yeah, right. But that's what. They said. Right, but his story is that he keeps running away. No, we we were. I was questioning of this last week. He seemed like he was full of shit. Yeah, I, I think. I think go ahead. I was going to say, I'll wait for an opportunity and see if I can, like, pick his pocket or grab his bag. Maybe look at it. See if he's carrying anything that might look interesting. I can. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not his pocket, but his. There's just looking at his book bag might be interesting. Something. A journal. Okay. A journal. Look in his bag. Yeah. And, and then did anybody else have anything to say, or is this something that I should uh, go ahead and proceed with? Well, wait till my time. And yeah, to sort of win him over with friendship. Yeah, so Drago's is going to chat him up. Uh, Logan's going to go in there in the wagon. Um, and I'm going to talk to into the carriage. Oh, yeah, because we upgraded it. <laughs> and then um, Logan did. I, yeah, yeah, he did a good job. And then I'm going to uh, just chat up some of the guards, uh, just talk about stories and see you, if you know, it works up. You know, he included a, a fold down two level bunk bed so that like people can sleep comfortably. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Eric we're we're, we're going to execute that. Maybe Logan can do like a stealth check and then I can do a, per, uh, a performance check. Yeah. Well, first let's let Dragos do his uh, persuasion. As you know, um, we've covered in the past how I understand the feat is kind of like an automatic thing that happens over, what is it, like 24 hours or something it specifies? Uh, I believe it's, it's much faster than that. It's Oh, it's like an hour or something? Really? I think it's just yeah. chatting to him for a minute, right? Yeah, it's conversation in a minute is basically doing charm person on it. Wow. So yeah, that's that but, subclass is special. Yeah, thing. that that's that's crazy. But uh anyway, I like to have the persuasion just to get an 
overall barometer of just how well this took, you can roll a one and your feat is still going to take effect. It just maybe isn't going to last as long or be quite as convincing as when you roll like a fucking 22. And so now, uh, basically, what you get is completely unexpected because you were charming as fuck. And this guy is telling you to go fuck yourself. I mean, not in so many words. He's he's being... Yeah, one is always a one. He's being uh, uh, far more closed. Like, all of his answers are very short. And, like, when he does get into detail, like, it's, it's really, like, off the topic kind of details. Like, no matter how much you try to, like, find out about him on a personal level, it seems like all he wants to talk about are, like, the facts and stats of, like, what has happened and, you know, things like that. Like, he'll only discuss very obvious things that you guys already pretty much knew already and like he won't give you any personal information whatsoever and you're being like super like you're laying it on thick like basically if you wanted to to get this guy into bed you sh you should be able to with how with how charming you're being and he is just not even having any of it like he just does not want to open up and be your friend. He's not being rude. When I said he's telling you to go fuck yourself, I meant that in a metaphorical, you know, like, you are you are really like, hey, dude, like, what's up, you know? Like, where are you from? What, you know, what school did you go to? You know, just whatever, you know, like, really trying to relate to him and talk to him. And, like, he's just like... Yep, this is where I went on this date, and this is where I went on this date, and this is what I did, and this is the outcome, and blah, blah, blah. So, so. Go ahead. I said, uh, oh, my thing cut off. Is he elf? Half elf? Uh, he appears to be just like a regular human dude. Hmm, he can be charmed, huh? I mean, like, maybe he is, but he's just really good at deflecting. Whatever. Uh, let's let's move on to uh, me or uh, maybe Logan. Let's see if uh, maybe Logan can roll a stealth check and see if we can yeah. find him. Yeah. So uh, Logan, uh, well, you were gonna try to roll a performance to distract. Is that what? Yeah, I'm just gonna like do a performance, just kind of just uh, <clears throat> just kind of like to yell to the guys and just be like, "Man, this is boring," and just try to get their attention. Okay. So what what's what what are you trying to perform? Are you trying to sing like a song? Like hey, let's all let's all sing. Uh, She'll be coming around the mountain. Yeah, I'll do like an old uh, road song. Yeah. Well, or uh, man, uh, I've been watching uh, Vikings again recently. They have like some really great like chant uh, kind of songs. You know, um, you know, like. The, the wind is calling, you know, and death yeah, yeah. comes for us all. And, you know, just like these really yeah. like. Maybe not that crazy, but maybe something about the road and like. Yeah, yeah. Beer or whatever. Well, I yeah, I, I, I didn't I didn't mean like necessarily it had to be like, you know, all about death. But, um, you know, just that intense Viking chant kind of kind of uh, song. Yeah, we'll do that. But about the road, you know. Because the point is, is that this is no, this is no oh, halfling, you know, hobbits dancing around singing about the green dragon and shit. Like, this is not a clap your hands. This is one where, like, everybody, like, listens to it and something stirs in their soul and shit, you know? Yeah, so uh, I roll a 12, so I, I do that's, yeah, that's, my thing. Yeah. I do my thing and then... um. He'll have a voice, just, you know, a yeah. good workable voice. They're kind of just staring at me, and uh, and I go like, "Well, it's usually better when everybody chimes in." So I guess you guys don't know this there's, one. There's a there's a part in the background. You're supposed to be like, "Oh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah." yeah just and just then by you myself, come in with, oh. <laughs> but you guys totally missed your cues, so it's kind of your fault, really, that like then, you didn't enjoy it as much. 
And during that commotion, Logan gets to try to swipe a bag or lick yep. a bag. Yep. Is he on a horse? Uh, yeah, he does. He does have. I a, assume a horse. his bag would just be in the carriage, though, just like with storage, right? Well, it's it's on his horse's saddle bag. Yeah. Oh yeah, his saddle bag. That's true. Hmm. Right He's up. on a horse, I. But I mean, you guys, you guys, like I said, I'm describing days worth of travel. This can be during one of the nights of of stopping, you know, or or one of the many pit stops as we covered, you know, that that Tusky has to make. Like you guys aren't leaving your elephant behind, so you know, like he can go fuck himself just because his horse might need less brakes. Like you don't give a shit. Yeah, he's staying with us, he's keeping our pace, right? Right. Well, he has to. Yeah, he's not going to walk on without us. Yeah. So I think it's better, Arn, if you just wait till nightfall and we just question him. Fire. Can you, okay, I guess, I guess we'll wait until nighttime. Um, maybe we can cut to a nighttime. And then... Um, yeah. Should we... Well, should we, we well, I don't know Let's if we should see. do that because he has guards around him. And that would be very... Uh, I don't want to kill any of these guards if they're not in on it, you know? We all do the... Since I'm... I can work on it. We, we can do the perception together or the distraction together and have a bunch of singing, bring everyone into the fire and have a uh, Logan go out and do it. Also, what I'd like to do is have my familiar be invisible and just sort of eavesdrop on Darren for a while. If anything he says to the, any of the guards, anything he reads, I want the imp to see it. Sure. And if the imp rep, uh, finds anything interesting, he'll report back to you. I'm going to ask the guards. I'm going to see when they're, because they're not like beside them all the time, right? Once they're away from him, I'm going to see if I can. I mean, these are like new guards. Like they're not like his loyal henchmen or nothing. Yeah. I just want to see how they feel about what's going on. Oh, well, you know, a, a, gold, a gold piece a week is a gold piece a week, you know? You know what happens to the people that he, he traveled with before his last guards? Yeah, I uh, heard they got uh, got the old uh, uh, redneck treatment. If we just uh, have a conversation with him, if my big friend over there has a conversation with him, are you guys cool with that? We're not going to hurt him. We just need to find out what... Uh, well, I mean, now that you say that, we totally yeah. think you're going to hurt him. I mean, if you would have just walked over and talked to him, we would we would have been like, oh, I guess the big guy's having a conversation with the boss, but you know, or the guide or whatever. But like, now that you're Logan. like, we're gonna we're not gonna hurt him. Like, okay, Logan, that's Logan a weird people, thing to say. Logan's oh, just feels like, like the equivalent of potato. Serious conversation, right? Oh, I mean, look, man, you know, just we. We we're only suspicious because that's like a totally normal thing that people say in the middle of like, you know, just traveling is like, hey, we're not gonna hurt this guy. Like, I sit I sit next to them while they're talking and I say, so what you guys talking about? Hurting this guy apparently. <laughs> uh, what, I, are you, what are you talking about? He's a big guy. Arn's a big boy. So when he when he talks, sometimes people don't hear so well. I just want to make sure. That we're all cool, and I'm gonna give the guys the last two bottles of wine I have. Oh, why didn't you fucking lead with that? Bada boom, maroon. Look at this. We oh, love man, this guy. Like all right, yeah. So just we're all gonna talk. Oh, man, we don't give a fuck what you do. You can, you can fucking kill him for all we give a shit. Thanks for the wine. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, that's. One gold piece of bottle too. Those bottles, those were. I yeah, they can't afford this shit. These are fucking dirt poor peasants. Uh, it's too bad we didn't have a bard that could play us a song. We have. We do have somebody. a bard. I am a bard. I can play a song. But you're over on your griffin somewhere. Are you down here with oh, us? Right here. Yeah, he, do, he he doesn't ride Zima all the time. That would like be an unnecessary okay, drain on her resources. Yeah, yeah that thing's at, at night right now. We're not traveling. Well, that too. Oh, that that's a that's a gonna... that's a very that's a very good point as well. I just meant in general, like you're you're walking alongside them and riding in the carriage with them. You know, you're not always on Zima. No, the, I thought we were at night. We were going to distract yeah, the guards. Yeah. Song, and you were going to go try and 
get into his uh, pouch real quick to get the take a look at his notes and, and anything he might have written down. You don't steal it because then he's going to get suspicious. You look at it, you see anything is interesting, you put it back in. Yeah, we're, we're not going to shake this guy down. We're just going to distract him, Logan, real quick, and then you're going to look in the bag. We can't be uh, too foolish right now. No, I just think we can be straight up with him. Like, hey, we're going to look in your bag. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, but uh, these guys don't give a fuck, so just do whatever we want, I guess. Yeah, you and Dragos are charming individuals. I'm sure you guys can figure out what his deal is. I know there's something up with him, but I don't have Okay, him. while we talk to him, though, you gotta go look in the bag, okay? Okay, that works. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'll do a little song. We, uh, or Arn can start a song, I'll join in, I'll play my lute, and uh, get everyone around the fire, sort of clapping and dancing. Sure. And while... uh, roll, roll, roll a... Um... Roll a uh, bardic knowledge check. Uh, I think uh, bardic knowledge in fifth edition just gives you like access to a bunch of knowledge skills, and so um, history or um, let me just take a look at the list of skills here. What would be relevant? History. Can you not just do a performance and see how well he remembers a song or something? Uh, it, it's it's whether or not he knows the song. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm looking for. I guess. How about how about, how about instead of that? How about uh, I use this time? I say I do this. I say, hey Dragos, do me a favor and play a really lo- low note on your instrument there, but just keep it going. And then I and then while he's doing that, I'm teaching the other guards the parts. Oh the song. yeah, yeah. So and then you have that him time. provide like the the key harmony note for everybody to like you know sub with and then uh, sync with and then yep. and then uh, you you have them come in with their part you know yeah okay so by doing that see this is why I wanted to wanted to clarify all of this by doing that what I'm gonna allow for is because you got above a ten. That was actually your aid another, so that Dragos can now roll performance with uh, advantage. Oh my gosh, these dice. Wow. That's enough, that's enough. It, they're it, just... it, yeah, hey, look, all, all you needed to do was like get everybody singing, and that that was you know just a difficulty class 12, you know. Just just a little bit harder than than a mundane role to get these guards to sing because Logan plied them with wine. They're yeah. they're they're feeling a little bit, you know, festive, so they're like, Oh, what are we barbershop quartetting this shit? Yeah, you know. Cool. We're, so we're we're that... your friends. <laughs> yeah, they're just freaking jamming out over there. Yeah. Dude, all right. So Logan Logan is uh I look at Logan like I give a nod and I say, Go sneak over there or you know. Sneak over there and check it out. So where is he now? Is Darren Gray Sky is it? is in his tent. Did he leave his saddlebag on his horse? His saddlebag is on his horse, which is leashed to the branch by his tent. He got this, dude. Right, you, yeah, you're I, stealth this. I don't know. Our, our dice haven't been good, but let's see. I'll, yeah, I'll stealth over there quietly. I'll Curse. cut around the wall. Curse. No, I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> curse. Yeah. You cursed us. Oh man, you guys uh, are rolling kind of a... low. Oh, but uh, okay, so rest assured that because of the distraction, all you needed to do was once again roll above a twelve in order to be able to sneak over to the saddlebag without being seen. Like I said, these guys are focused on their barber shop quartet routine, and so they're like, you know, getting a little bit of uh you know, um, choreography mixed in there. They're like, oh, what if I spin around right here when I come in with this? And yeah, like they're, they're, really, uh, they're really turning it into a Disney production at this point. Yeah, they seem like pretty cool guys. Hey, I mean, you know, they're the three Gs. Yeah, Greg, Gronk, and Gorg, or whatever. <laughs> Gus and Gary, but yeah. I don't know. I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I, it, you're like I literally don't care. The, they they barely register as as unnamed NPCs. <laughs> like, yeah. So uh, anyway, um, you just needed to roll above a twelve. So now you're over by a saddlebag. Nobody's noticed you. You flip it open and I look for medallions. Anything 
yeah. So you see, you see a couple of things. You see a leather book that is uh, bound, like there's there's a a wrap of of leather tied around it in three different places, and um, a a crystal rod. Like it's it's topped with a crystal, and then it's a rod of like some kind of unknown material. Um, That's strange. But it it looks really like, uh, light, like okay. like like super not dense, and it doesn't look like wood. Like, is that bone? Like you, mm. maybe you should roll a a insight. Or an investigation uh, to to see if you can tell what it is. Yeah, so uh, you're you're looking at it. You're like, oh my god, that is bone. That's like some kind of weird, like, is that a is that a baby's arm? Like arm bone? Like is that what it is? Like oh my god, what the f- what is that? It, but it's definitely a bone, but like what kind of bone? Like an arm bone from like a baby or something? Like, oh my yeah, god. I'm gonna take it now. That's wait, scary. wait, wait, wait. Remember, don't steal anything. It's too late. It, oh, my uh, yeah, that, that, that shit's a that, that ship is sailed. So <laughs> I just hear I just hear my head. So uh I thought you changed I thought you you turned a new leaf. So uh as as you you touch it you get a sensation like you're skiing down the side of a mountain. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's when you bite into a York peppermint patty. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, you get a sensation like numb, cold running up your arm. But like, you know, you just, you, you're like, okay, that's weird. And you take it anyway, I assume. And put it in your pocket. Yeah, because I'm going to go as far away as I can get to identify it. I just got to see how long that's going. Yeah. And then uh, the only and other then, the only yeah. other stuff you see in there is like alchemical regents and like a couple of like different potions and uh, like some chalk and um, like, yeah, like stuff like that. This dude is okay, definitely. This thing is scary now. I have to take it. I gotta identify it. This dude is definitely a necromancer. I have no clue, man. This thing scares the shit out of me. That's why I want to go hide. Dude, somewhere this me. dude's definitely a necromancer or a summoner because earlier people were saying that they were like ghouls or whatever that attacked the the caravan. Chalk is used for that sort of stuff too. Dude, yeah. Okay, I guess we wouldn't know yet until Logan uh, tells us, though. So. so let's wait for Logan to identify his, uh, yeah, I want his to weird bone thing. Has to identify as a ritual, start doing the prayer. Okay. So you you take it off, like, into the woods or some shit? Yeah, just basically, like, one minute away. I'll just walk for yeah. like and then stop. Yeah. And then start the okay. start the ritual. So, you know, you, you like get off a ways and uh you cast identify as a ritual and that takes like ten minutes. Uh, there's only one minute. Only so one gonna... only one minute? Like ten minutes. Yeah, I was ritual. gonna oh. oh, all rituals, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I don't have it set up for ritual, right? So I, I was gonna say only one minute is identify, that's crazy. That's like not how I remember it. But okay. Well no, I can use I can use a spell slot, right? And do it. Yeah, you could just you yeah you could just cast it, and then yeah, you, it's a ritual if you don't want to use a spell slot. But you could just do it like right when you're at the bag. Yeah, you I'll don't have to go do anywhere. Yeah, I'll just hide out somewhere in the bushes and. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna long rest right now anyway. <laughs> okay, so, uh, you cast, um, uh, identify on the weird bone crystal top staff, and uh, as you do so. Roll. A wisdom save. Oof. Oh, wait, I'm wrong. I do have to take the ten minutes. I have to do it as a ritual because I don't have the components. Ah. That's okay. You you have a spell focus though. Well, spell focus is uh, take a oh. 
Yes, yeah, spell focus is allow you to cast without using a. Correct. Oh, okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah. You just... So yeah. So now I gotta make a wisdom save. Okay. So now make a wisdom save. This is my thing. So difficulty should... class sixteen. Uh, okay. Where is it? Um, wisdom. Where's my saving? Wait, wait, wait. Is he within ten feet of me? No. Oh, no, he he ran. He, yeah, he ran off to do this. Still, that's true. That, oh, that is not a fifteen. <laughs> that is not a fifteen. I want you to know that. Okay, you're missing like ten. You're short. Yeah, yeah, dude, you're short ten. Another you're, you're short. You're short people. ten. And you know, I thought yeah. I had a talk with you about this. You come to me, light. I don't like this. What, look what you make me do to you. So, <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, anyway, anyway, you are sucked into a nightmarish realm of M.C. Escher-like uh, oh, nightmares no. and uh, undescribable horrors on every side of you. You cannot fathom what you are looking at and swiftly go mad. You spend hey, you spend a hundred years or a day. Maybe it was just a moment on this plane. But like going through to Narnia, you experience a lifetime of insanity before, I mean, who goes and checks on him after? Is, is yeah, he... I'm not coming back for a while. Yeah, I mean, how, how long does it actually last in, uh, like in, in our world, well, this experience for him? I'm asking who eventually goes and checks on him, so at least that long. I would. Okay, Electo, like, sensing... Is there at least a flute? Am I at least learning to play the flute while I'm in there? <laughs> no. Like Picard? No, no. Uh, you're, you're, you're drifting through the, the nightmarish void with barely any swag like Bender. It's like, it's like uh, Hellboy. Yeah. And, 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 so, and so as um, you're locked in this nightmare... Electo notices that you've been gone and like these guys are running out of songs to sing. Like they, they, they're on their uh, last hundred bottles of beer and, and that's probably going to be a wrap. And so um, Electo comes to check on you and Electo you don't have any trouble finding him really because uh, you can almost feel the magical vibrations coming off of him as he's locked in a feedback loop where casting his identify spell uh, actually like connected him to the rod as, as if he was like attuned to it. But this is this is wrong. This is not, this is not like regular, regular. magic. I'm going to bite my, I'm going to bite my I'm tongue off. You guys can help me. Can yeah. I cast a spell magic? Uh, yes. Um, but just one second. I just want to make something clear that like, as you actually, why don't you go ahead and roll an arcana check? Just like looking at him. It, don't roll a one, please. It's not a one. So, uh, you can tell not like, you know, anything useful per se, uh, well, I mean, maybe a bit, but you can tell that there is a amount of like weirdness to this magic that is beyond normal. This is not regular magic, blood magic uh fey magic you know you you're not sure what this is but it's it's nothing that you've really seen before and yeah, as a, oh sorry no go ahead 
as a wizard, you you did grow up learning that there were other schools of magic besides your specialty evocation, uh, but you don't recognize this one, basically. Yeah, and not not even like don't recognize it as one of the schools of magic. You don't even recognize it as like a type of magic that you've even been like described about because, you know, you've like read different tomes of of you know knowledge on different kinds of magic and all of that and. This just falls outside of all of that. So as you cast Dispel Magic, um, you actually feel the the rod resisting you. And you have to roll a caster level check in order... What's the power shirt? What's that? I clicked that by speed. accident. But, oh, but I will oh. get I will get that if I can dispel this magic. So yes, Look, but real quick, are you trying to dispel the rod? or Are you trying to dispel? Um, no, no, I would not not the rod. Yeah, Logan. Yeah. No, he's he's not trying to dispel the rod. It's just trying to dispel the magic that is um, locking Logan into this loop with the rod. Uh, the rod is actually like fighting Electo on this. So now okay, he has to make. Yeah, so now he has to make a caster level check versus this rod's level, which is difficulty class 16. So you Oof. roll d20 plus your caster level plus your proficiency bonus. Okay, so it would be uh, d20 plus 6 plus proficiency. Yep. Okay, go for it, Gary. I think it's 3, so at least an 8 or 9. Oh, go! Go! oh come on! It. So as you cast Dispel Magic... The rod amplifies the power flowing through it, and now you have to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. I'm going to trap all of you guys with this rod. Oh, yeah. You're like, uh, there we go. Hey, fuck, out, fuck out of here with your weak-ass mind control bullshit, you stupid rod. Why do you think I shaved my head for, me for intellectual battles just like this? <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> Your magic slides off my head. <laughs> yeah. Can I just try again? Like, is there anything that stops me from just uh, using another spell slot and trying again? Uh, so, um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Dispel Magic is a second level and you have third level slots? It is a third level spell and I it have three a... third level slots. So oh, used... Okay, and you don't have fourth level slots yet, huh? That is correct. Okay, so uh, what I am going to allow you to do is roll an Arcana check. Arcana. Okay, I see that's much better. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So now you know that uh, for sure this is powerful magic from another plane and, oh! and that and that it is not like the the fey wild like the it's not fey or anything like that it doesn't appear to be demonic and so you know that leaves something that you've only barely ever come across in your most uh like insane arcane studies like um the thing about studying the arcane is like there's a lot of rabbit holes of like weird like theories that never pan out and like weird theories about like other dimensions that like can't be proven and everything yeah and, like adrenochrome right 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 and so <laughs> and, and so you know you'll notice eight giant hairy tits growing out of your back and, Whoa. And, uh, crazy uh, that's some crazy magic the adrenochrome man you got to get it straight from the adrenal gland uh <laughs> but um you'll sink just like a fucking rock uh but anyway you read about a realm known only as the far realm that was said to have contained the seeds of uh, powerful arcane magic that is where, like, all of the most twisted horror abominations that plague this world come from. Oh, it's like Warhammer's universe. 
Yeah. Like the Warhammer 40k? The yeah. Grimdark? Yeah. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. For me to try something? Well, you're locked in a loop, so... <laughs> I just wanted to see if I could cast. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, so right now, in the dream world, the the nightmare you know realm that you're in, uh, you're like completely helpless and like you can't even control where you're moving you're just like floating through all of this stuff and as you're floating along like it's it's basically uh lucy in the sky with diamonds but like times times willy wonka's uh nightmare tunnel you know with like some hellraiser and and then just you know like every cthulhu mythos horror you know thrown in there like literally okay, you get come on, Electro, get me out of here. yeah literally Anyone. you get flashes of like indescribable eldritch nightmares that like i can't describe because that's why they're indescribable you know they they're they're literally beyond the human mind's ability to imagine and so we're we're left with just like yeah you're insane you know like right now in this world and like the drifting just goes on and on and on and every second that you spend in there is another eternity <laughs> you know <laughs> And it and it just goes on and on and on, and uh, you long, you know, to just die, and like death is not coming. Nothing. You're not aging. You just keep existing for thousands of years of just endless nightmares. At least give me back my skin. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna try again. Give me back my skin. Okay. So uh, now, when you are trying this, you know that there is a chance that this magic can suck you in too and so you need to ward yourself against um that uh let me just take a real quick look at your spells here and see if there's something that you have that might uh help uh yeah so you believe that a a, a pl- application of mage armor with a a slight tweak to the spell will will give you some added protection against this it's not um you know in the purview of the like raw of it and all of that this is just um Basically, you can try again, but you have to spend extra spell slots to be able to have an effect. Okay, sounds good. So I expend the first level and the third level. Yes. So by casting a protection spell, you try again, and uh, now you roll your uh, um, caster level check again. With advantage, question mark? Uh, No. Dang and so now you roll your wisdom save again, but this time with advantage because of your casting of mage armor. But like, it's more like mind armor. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And so with your mind armor and rolling a 20, you are now fully protected and can just like keep doing it. But you're out of spell slots after this one, so it's your last fucking chance. So oh, go yes. ahead and grab it if you have to. Grab the thing, take it away from me. Yeah. Uh, well, I, well mean, I mean, I assume you want to try to dispel one last time. Yeah, I'll try. Okay. You can roll an Arcana check to see if you learned anything from that. If you get above a twenty, I'll say that you have learned something and you uh you uh get advantage. You can do it. Oh, no, so you close. She knows, she knows where this thing came from. So close. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, but, okay. So, uh, you you do manage to get advantage on this uh, caster level check using your last third level slot. 
All right. Ah, oh, finally. So you you manage to overcome the power of the rod, and it releases its grip on Logan. When Logan comes back, his hair has turned to bright white. I can Oops. work with that. Kind of obvious. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. As a player, is there a color that you feel would be more appropriate and please you more? I just went with bright white as like a default, but like you have changed in some physical, identifiable way. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm going to start looking His like His arm is back. No, now he has three arms. Yeah, he has now, three arms. Now, now he has three arms. No, yeah, now he's got like now he's got now. three legs. Eh? Crazy. crazy, crazy. <laughs> so, uh, uh, anyway, uh, if if the hair turning white, you know, is not quite to your liking, like feel free to choose anything else. No, it's like cable. I'll, I'll look like cable. At the yeah, end of this. I'm going to be covering scars and metal parts. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so yeah, so cool we will that. we will go forward with that. I I am so sorry. I I forget that like even though I I trust that you guys like where I go with a lot of stuff. Like these are your characters, and I don't want to make a change like that without your permission. Yo, you know what I forgot about? I forgot about Electo's arm. The teal. Don't mention oh, oh, it. Oh, uh, he he's got one more uh, check to make. Last time he got a little bit of feeling back. Oh yeah, it's what a do DC. To, do I just roll a D twenty? Constitution six. Oh yeah. Sorry, you got me right when I jumped up to grab a soda. Yeah, it's a Constitution save. Hey! Oh, finally. Full recovery. Uh, uh, Electo. Uh, Slap me with that hand. Feels his his uh, hand, and it stops like feeling like dead weight, and starts feeling like a hand again. It was the contact with all the necrotic energy, or whatever's happening with the wand. I got. Yeah, my yeah. Uh, it's not necrotic. It's it's far it's realm. Mystery. It's it's chaos. Okay, well, so... as soon as I'm able to, I'm going to run to that guy and beat his ass. So just let me know when I can do that. Because I'm in a mad rage at this point. That that guy yeah, well, you're is also, this thing. You're also a gibbering madman at the exact moment. Just let me know if I can get a chance to see him yeah. go for him. So, Electo, do... as you finally break you know, the grasp and, uh, oh, shatter, 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 uh, cast shatter every fucking round. Sorry. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny. Uh, but, um, <laughs> anyway, uh, I just want to handle real quick, like, uh, pulling Logan out of the far realm and, and what happens. So as, as he comes to, you watch the color drain from his hair. You watch a look come over his eyes that like it, it looks like that cartoon animation when a character goes crazy where you know like you can just see it and um it's full of stars yeah it's full of stars and, and logan just begins like saying like crazy you know shit like that you know like stuff that but he i'm so glad that you said it the way you that you did because yes you focus on like star metaphors it's all about stars like everything you say is like about stars and this star murder and murder and the one star and the dark star and the you know the, you know just like star 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 you know and and especially you start talking about star fall and like when the stars fall and and you know just stuff like that and it's just like mad gibberish Electo, it's all connected. It's all connected. Oh, jeez. All will be revealed. I'm going to call our friends over and be like, look what happened to this guy. We're currently performing, right? 
I thought you guys were running out of songs. Yeah, you're you're uh, you're down to like three bottles of beer on the wall. Yeah, we can't go there right now. Okay. Familiar okay. uh, has been watching Darren the whole time. Has he done anything? He would have let you know as soon as uh uh Logan like got fucked up by the the rod. Okay, if you want to go check it out, I'll keep these guys entertained. I'll keep these guys entertained. Uh, but I'm saying that the familiar is in Darren's tent, just watching him. Oh, is and, he done I'm sorry. I thought you said he's in the air. You said in Darren's tent. I'm so sorry. I I didn't hear you. Um, I didn't hear you properly. Uh, yeah. No, Darren is in some sort of weird trance. So he hasn't respond. He hasn't reacted to any of this. Mm-mm. Okay. Great. Um, and Electo. So has it, Electo made us aware of what's going on, or? I would like to, in a way that's not going to be super obvious. Well, it, I don't think it matters anymore because these guys don't care about, care about yeah. um, um, the guy, and they're kind of drunk off their ass. So let's just go and check it out. Yeah. So I'll come over and we'll. I'll just tell him, I'm going to be right back and go to the bathroom. And then I go, one bottle of beer in the end. You guys know the rest. Whatever. I got to go. I'll be right back. <laughs> it's getting late. Yeah, you guys should probably head uh, head into your tents. It's, uh, you know, sun's already full, uh, whatever. <laughs> it's in the sky. <laughs> no, it's still dark. I mean, moon, moon. Sorry. <laughs> moon, moon, moon. And then uh, I hope they just go to their tent and knock out, or they're probably already asleep. Well, they're they're still like, you know, polishing off the last bottle, little little bit, you know, left in there. But yeah. Okay, I, I grab Dragos. This, I grab Drago, or not? I don't grab Dragos. I just like nod over to the bushes where Electo went into because they're taking a while. So let's go check it out. So, so we, we arrive out on the scene and we see uh, Richard's hair. Logan, yep. I mean, sorry, sorry, Logan's hair. He touched some kind of horrible magic object and now he's gone crazy. Is it on the ground now? Have I dropped it on the ground? Yeah. As soon as the loop was broken, you dropped it on the ground. I uh, I go over to Logan you and I, I back up. in slow motion. <laughs> I go over to Logan and I, I pick him up because he looks like he hit his head. He's, he has like a bruise, so I'm going to pick him up. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Logan, as you watch it fall, it looks like a comet falling from the sky. Oh, we're all doomed. I, I pick him up and I go, are you okay? You look really out of it. What happened to you? Logan, can you hear me? I, I can't speak yet. I'm just gonna try to get away like a cat. I'm gonna try to slip away and try to find this this guy. I'm, I'm gonna use um. Hold well, on. before you use a spell, I, I'm gonna restrain him. I'm, I'm gonna just hold him. I'm gonna use my um, soothing words to calm him down. Nice. Oh yeah. What does that do? It calm emotions, but doesn't cost me a spell slot. Yeah. So, uh, for that, uh, he, he's got to roll a wisdom save. Okay. Give me one sec. Fail, fail, fail. Curse. Actually, you want him to succeed. Pass. Yeah, I was going to say, cause if it was a fail, I could op- just choose the option to fail. I want to succeed. Yeah. Uh, He failed. Yep. So, uh, as as uh, uh, Dragos tries to calm your emotions, what actually ends up happening is um, you you fall asleep because you don't have normal emotions right now. And so the spell has the unintended normal sleep. Yeah, the spell has the unintended effect or the the effect I should say has the unintended effect of uh since it's not a spell 
um, of putting you to sleep. Your soothing words help his addled mind, his addled mind to like come out of its feverish, you know, nightmare state for just long enough for it to like shut down from the trauma. So he just passes out in my arms? Yeah. So, Arn, take him back to the wagon, put him in there. Uh, Electo, follow me. The Darren's in some sort of trance, so I'm not worried about him hearing us. Uh, I'm going to go over to the bag and pull out the book, and Electo and I are going to look at it and try to figure out what's going on. All right, I'm, I'm going to go set him down and then uh, join you guys. Since I'm fully protected from the wand, if I use my cloak as like a, you know, a barrier, can I pick it up without um, having issues with it? Oh, well, you can try. Uh, careful. Do you, you don't want to. You have no idea what this magic is. I'm carrying it. It was what he tried to di- uh, identify as when he got in trouble. Oh, that's, oh, that's true. true. He did just he did just touch it and nothing happened. So it's when he tries to cast a spell on it. Yeah, sorry, I'm not trying to be a jerk. It's just like I can never answer a question like that, like definitively. Like you got, if you don't know, you got to just try. You know. That's true. That's true. So, okay. so whatever you want to do, I'll I'll use I'll kind of like slide my hand up in my sleeve so that I can use my sleeve to pick it up, um, and then we can look at the book. Yeah. So uh, you you pick it up and uh, everybody goes over to the saddlebag and. You pull out the book, and like I said, it's tied with uh, three leather straps. Uh, can we? Anybody know a good way to check for a curse on this or a trap? No, no. Well, you can, uh, you can always cast uh, identify. <laughs> do we want to do that? <laughs> oh, and I don't even have that, and Logan's asleep. So unless somebody else oh, has it. Yeah, sorry. Dragos might. I'm looking. I don't think I took. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yep, I didn't. I was. I was assuming we'd have the monk awake. No. Um. How about we just? I don't know. I don't want to open it now. Yeah, I'm scared. <laughs> That's, That's right. Uh, you are. You would happen to have mage hands, would you? Not. Um. I could just try opening it. I guess. I don't know. If you if you do it, you do it. You, if you want to do it, your character does it. I don't think the can, can, can I look at it first? And... I'm going to give you a bardic inspiration, and I'll hand you the book. Okay. Do you think I can do? Because I'm assuming this is like a spell book. Is there anything like you know engraved on the cover? Like anything that I can glean from it before opening it? Uh, there's nothing on the cover. It's just a, a, uh, leather wrapping with a bunch of pages inside. Okay. Well, I feel like I would open it, so let's go ahead and give it a try. try. All right. Hold that idea. Well, um, the, the guards are still awake? Uh, they're, they're, uh. Two of them are are in the tent, like playing a game of dice, and one of them is passed out by the fire. Okay, so I'm thinking I can use suggestion and have him open it for us. That's <laughs> a good idea. I'm gonna call one of the guards out and say, uh, "I'm gonna." Throw the book to him and say, hey, have you ever seen this before? Can you open it up and see if it looks familiar? And then if he doesn't do it, then I'm just going to cast a suggestion on him and make him do it. Or try and get him to do it. <laughs> he he, uh, he said, ah, uh, open that for you, sure. And he goes and he starts to tug on the first knot and he does that thing where, like, you tug it the wrong way. And it, like, extra ties. Dang. Can he not open it? Yeah, no, it's like, it's super tied now, and now he can't get it. And he's drunk. I I don't know. Dude, open this shit. Just open the fucking book, Carrie. I mean, I like to... Uh, I got it! 
Obviously not, I say, and take the book away. Ah, get out of here. He, like, tries to slap your hand away. And I just snatch it. I just rip it off his hands, and I give it yeah. to him. Yeah, I mean, he he's he's not big enough to stop you. Okay. Because he touched it, and it didn't, like, set off anything, so. I'm going to try. All right, so the knot is actually, like, he really fucked that knot up. So, uh... You need you need to roll a dexterity check to see if you can get it untied. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just untying a knot. It's not fucking rocket science. You you, you push one end through until you find a loop and pull until the open end is through there and repeat. You know. So yeah. You untie the knot. You open the book. And what do I see? Well, you know, here's the thing. Um, as you open the book, uh, you you see um, crazy symbols, and roll a uh, wisdom save, though with advantage. She, she does she add does a, a plus three because she said within 10 feet of me. Ooh, nice. Ooh, that... So it's a 19. Nice. So uh, as you stare at the eldritch... Um, um writings in this book you can feel yourself starting to like get dizzy and like you catch a glimpse of like some eldritch nightmare for like a flash of a moment like um like uh subliminal messaging kind of kind of uh you know flashes and um as as you you are just feeling yourself like get sucked in you slam the book shut and like stop looking at it unless unless you'd rather keep looking at it no thank you i shut the book and i say don't anybody else look in there All right, so I'm guessing that was a bad experience then? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm of the opinion we wake Darren up now and get some answers. Got it. And I walked towards the tent and I got this. <laughs> like, uh, you pull him out by the feet, I'm going to hold a knife to his throat while we have a little conversation with him. Sounds good. Let me know if I can wake up or if anyone can try to wake me up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we do, can we try to wake up Logan before we do? Yeah. So, uh... Have restoration? Does Arn have restoration? Yeah. I I don't know. You are you're you seem pretty sick. And you know what? Honestly, I don't think I would. You want to know why? Because he needs rest. He he looked like he's tired. So I, I leave him there. That That's what Arn would do. Him. So, sorry. I would leave you there. Uh, but that's okay. But, don't worry about that, because uh, I was going to say that you get a wisdom save whenever, uh, like, shit starts going down anyway, because I would never leave a PC, like, completely handicapped or in a combat. jumping over my body fighting. Yeah, yeah like, just, just like, nope, you're just, you're just not in this. You know, like, you, you at least get a wisdom save to see how like effective you can be in combat. So basically like if you make the difficulty class 16 wisdom save, then like Logan is back temporarily and able to just act as normal. If you fail it, you're still able to take actions in combat, but you are not understanding the world around you to the extent that you should be making like 
major tactical decisions, etc. Like, yeah. you know, it it should be like, more of, more of a hide there. Well, no, just like more of a primal instinct kind of fighting rather than like you know making sure that you flank or like like you shouldn't be cooperating with your allies as much. You know, is one of the main things. Headbutt everything. Yeah, yeah, when stuff like that. Headbutt everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get it. Okay, so we approach the tent then. Yes. And so as you approach the tent, you uh, roll for initiative. Oh, shit. Damn it, I really want to re-roll that, but uh, you guys would uh, see it. <laughs> and then... And then I can't uh, can't justify it. So yeah, if you get to reroll, that means we get to reroll. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe we have surprise too, since we're kind of grabbing him out of a trance. Yeah, that's true. Uh, well, there was. See, thing about that. Yeah, well, you'll you'll find out. It's fine. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, Tusky and Zima are like out of this because like they're just like chilling, and. Uh, Logan, uh, go ahead and roll your wisdom right, right now, and then roll your initiative as well. Okay, cool. Is it still a 16, a 16 save? Yeah, it's still a 16 My save, but... staying on the board. What's going on? Like, like, like I said, the penalty for failing is not that he can't participate. You guys don't see, do you see it? No, is we don't see it. I think you're up? rolling off on accident, maybe. Yep. Uh, if he fails, it's just he cannot battle effectively and has to just like, you know, either charge the first thing next to him or, you know, just whatever. Well, there you go. So nice. Logan is Logan is back as He's back, baby, as soon as as soon as something goes down, like right now, they're quietly trying to sneak up on him. But the first round that something goes down, you'll hear it and jump into action. So go ahead and roll your initiative. Oh. I think you want it to be low, hopefully. Oh, it doesn't okay, it doesn't really matter. Like what what nice. whatever it is, hey, it'll it it'll it'll all play out, you know, so All is right. Darren, uh, is Darren was Darren wearing armor since I saw him is uh in his um trance? Um no. He wasn't wearing his armor. Okay. No. Oh wait, hold on. Let me see if I can find a map with some tents in it. Yeah, we're missing with some pretty dark shit. This guy I think is definitely like sacrificing people or summoning or like sending yes. people to this place. I don't know. I gave uh Electo a Bardic inspiration, I'll give Arn one too. Thank you. Oh yeah, we got this map right here. Finally, we're gonna Perfect. fight something. No. <laughs> Perfect. We'll just use this. Cool. So yeah, you guys are all like, "Hey, let's go fuck this guy up." And Logan. You see, right where I said you. We should have just went immediately in the first. Yeah, yeah, we should have. We, we had no clue. We should have just went and roughed him up when I mentioned it. <laughs> We're well ahead of him. It's, like, it's okay. I lost my mind, but at least we know for sure. Hey, man, you got to make sacrifices. <laughs> no, something's going on. Yeah, definitely. It's good that you're awake, though. We'll, uh, right. we'll, we'll, ha we'll handle your PTSD later. So, Dragos, you can see the map, yes? Yep. Okay, so, what do you do? By the way, I moved Tusky and uh, Zim over there because I think that, that would be their tents. We oh, put like a little roof okay. over them. Okay. Tusky might be a little big for a tent, though. He can sleep next to it. Okay. 
But yeah, uh, Zima being used to being, you know, well kept, like appreciates having a tent to like, you know, snuggle up in and not have to, you know, be all um, out in the cold. And because it's it's getting to be like later in the fall and like the, the rains are cold and not nice. By the way, Dragos, I don't know if you're muted or something, but we didn't hear you. I'm thinking still. So. I'm going to. Uh, get near the tent, and I'm going to ready an action uh, with Witch Bolt. Witch Ooh. Bolt. Who's on first? <laughs> so I'm off to the side. I'm so uh, I'm not right next to him when he comes out, but I'm here. Okay. Where is the tent entrance uh, in in proportion to us? Okay, so uh, basically. You guys are right in front of the tent with the flap to go in. Like, Arn is right in front of it. Got it. Right, at, right at that crease. Back a little bit, just because I'm not... I don't need to get hit if I don't have to. Um, and then... Okay, so I think... You're right. I'm going to also prepare a witch bolt, but I have mine prepared for second level. Ooh. Well, what are you guys' uh, like ready action though? Like when one thing happening has to be a bit more specific than that. Uh, he said when he steps out. <laughs> What'd you say? When he steps out is is what oh, Rago said. Oh, when he steps out. Yeah. Okay. So as soon as that motherfucker shows his face. Should I just open the the tent flap? Oh, so I see Arn. I mean, Arn. Uh, Electo, did you walk away or did you just stay right there? Um, I guess I should back up, huh? Let's do a that. little bit, maybe. I'll send my familiar in to just see if he's awake. Oh, I thought your familiar was still in there. It is, I guess. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. Oh, so okay. He, what's his status? Is he awake? Is he uh chilling? So I'll let Arm know too that he's in there. He seems to be unconscious in a trance. Yeah, and we have no fucking clue, so we can't act like we know what's going on. So we just gotta <laughs> open the tent, I guess. Like, uh, it would be kind of uh, meta gaming if we were just to like bum rush this guy right now. So I see you guys back away, and I'm like, um, do I just open it? Like, uh, do, what do you guys uh, need uh, backing up for? A, it looks like he's asleep. Okay, I I, op I open the flap to the tent and I peek in there. All right, he is sitting on the floor. There is nothing else in the tent. He's just sitting in the corner with his legs crossed. He is uh wearing just a simple uh loincloth and just trancing out. He's bugging out. All right, I just go in there and I um, I just grab him by his ankles and I lift him up in the air, and then I whistle. Okay, so as you enter the tent, in an instant, he stands up and is ready to fight you. Do you continue with your plan to move forward and grab him? How do, he stands up and what what like what does he look like? He's just barehanded. I know, I, I know, and you're like, dude, it's not even your turn. What the fuck? You I know, right? What the fuck? You can't just be what? It's my turn, and then it's and Logan's you're turn. What? <laughs> this is bullshit. You know, so he, and and he's like, yeah, dude, I get a reaction to you entering my fucking my my space here, and I used it to stand up. Well. So, uh, wait, wait. So he stands up, but he has no weapons? No weapon. And he's naked, basically. He's got a loincloth on. Okay. Um, if he just stands up and he's just naked, I, I just proceed, I guess. I go, we need answers, and I try to grab him by the ankles. Okay. So, uh, you, um, attempt to go in and grab him, and... As you do, when you get within 10 feet, it has seemingly impossible reach as it suddenly tries to punch you 
twice. It by this guy, the guy in front of me? Yeah. He has, oh, so he attempts to punch me, but like I'm 10 feet away. He has long reach. His, it is not a guy we're fighting. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm a bit slow. So he misses, so I don't really feel anything. I just think he's swinging at the air. Oh, he hit. Never mind. Yeah, uh, ignore that. No, it's not. It's just a reg- <laughs> it's just a regular reg- it's just a regular <laughs> dude punching you. What are you talking about? Oh God, yeah, uh, regular dude. What the heck, man? But while he does this, his arm does like seem to extend. And yes, I am uh, completely um, like changing the way his polymorph you know, works and all of that. Typically, he would just be able to assume either a human or a slot form. In my ruling, this guy can like instantly shift in between them mid-battle in order to be able to get advantage of his reach while still looking like a human. That's wild. Yeah. Okay, uh, that happens, and yeah. uh, as a reaction, I just stepped in front of him, and he swung at me. He had a ready to action to attack anyone who walked into his space. Okay. So, yeah, now you can finish. Um, should I... I mean, after he punches me, I wouldn't go for his ankles. I draw my sword... So you just hear like the shink, like I draw, I draw my sword and uh, I whistle, hopefully, hope, hopefully just signaling to like to them to get in here. Okay. And then, oops, I forgot. I have to hold this button. Yes. Please. And then, and then I step in front of him and I swipe at him. Swiper, no swiping. Hey. 21. Oh, I didn't target. Dang yeah, it. Yeah, uh, target him, but let me check his AC, because if that was a hit, then I'm just going to let it go. Please. It might be. It is. Okay, I hope so. 21, if it's not a hit, this guy is freaking crazy strong. Bala, yo. I know, dude. Okay, and then... So I did 16 to him. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to Divine Smite, because uh, this guy is freaking me out. Just a level one, though, I think. Ooh, max damage. Nice. Nice. So your sword glows as you smite the whatever the fuck it is that just punched you from ten feet away. You're like, that's that's definitely against the rules. Yeah, what it looks like, I think, in my head canon is I uh, I pull out the sword and, um, like you said, the sword glows, and then when I hit him, um, it just kind of like a crackling noise, kind of like a, I'm, I don't really know uh, how to explain it, but it's kind of like a, like a thunderclap kind sure. of, but it's it's not it's not like a boom, it's just right. like a kind of like a, a lightning bolt. The, I don't know the, how to that it. roll, that like roll a staticky of, noise. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, you you hit him. But, like, it doesn't really seem to have, like, done a whole lot of damage, really. Like, I mean, that was a really good hit. 32 points of damage. And, like, he's a, he's a little bit wounded. But, like, you've taken down, you know, you've cut off Men. the head of a, of, yeah. a, of, a, of a deer with this stroke. You know, like, this dude just took it like a champ. Yeah, dude. He, he, he took one of my, like, most accurate hits. So I, I kind of, like, look at him like, oh, geez, this thing didn't even flinch and i'm kind of scared right now yeah not scared but i i am uh i'm like oh i think we may have wandered into some trouble and logan hearing arn's whistle you instantly snap out of your sleep state and you are back get him logan sick him boy hello man You just charge in there okay. past the guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm over here. There, yeah. Just like a wild dog. I'm rushing in there. Yeah, he certainly got the speed. You heard my whistle, and I'm so happy that you're awake. Yeah, I don't even know you're there. I'm just rushing in there. 
<laughs> I'm like you're... yelling. Ah. Oh, you didn't oh, have you... enough movement to move and attack. No, he was just out of the fifty feet, and so I had to dash the other ten. Ah, okay. And uh, so now I am going to um, provoke an attack at, attack of opportunity from Logan by moving here. Well, he would only get one with a reaction of it. No, no, he's you get a, an attack of opportunity on him. Oh, I get to attack him. Oh, yeah, because nice. he moved. He moved I, above yeah. me. He moved out of your range. Okay, I'm just gonna go with my punch here. There we go. It's okay. It's free damage. And then, I move over here to this corner and I provoke an attack of opportunity from uh, Arn. I'd be glad. And Never then mind. I grab my staff and I hurl some flame at you. What kind of flame? A fiery one? Yeah, the, the kind that you hurl. Hurl flame. <laughs> and uh, I miss you. So this like fireball shoots out of the tip of his staff and I like dodge out of the way and I'm like, what yep. the hell? Yep. This guy has magic. I do. Is that, does that trigger our attack on him? Uh, he's still, he's, he's yeah, still I, in the I'm, tent, I'm right? still in the tent. And actually, yeah, no, uh, I forgot. That's why I chose this icon for him. I decided that he actually doesn't need his staff uh, that that he uh, can just hurl flame. So, uh, yeah, I just got away from you so that I could have some range to hurl the flame. But yeah, Or uh, else it would be at disadvantage. Right, right, right. So I just took the attacks because I was like, I got hit points. That's That's what the hell hit points are for. So uh, I I hurl a ball of flame by by conjuring it in my hand and tossing it at you, but you dodge out of the way. You're like, now you're throwing fireballs, dude. First, your arm stretched across the room. Now you're throwing fireballs. What the fuck? I thought you were just a dude. Zima snores, uh, kind of half like a lion and half like a bird. You know. <laughs> what about Gary, Greg, and Gus? They're both doing the same thing. Uh, yeah, they're they're uh, all passed out now at this point. Tusky, however, here's what's going on, and he pokes his head out to see what's going on. Tusky is experienced in battle. He knows when something's up. He heard the whistle. Can I, since I know where he is, because my uh, imp is in there, can I attack him through the tent with the witch bolt now? Uh, no, because you still need line of sight with the witch bolt. You you can see him, but not have line of sight due to the the you know imp being in there same as if you had like a mirror set up or something like that to where you could see him through that but unless you were able to angle it off of the mirror just right which like who knows how i would rule that but you know you still need to have like a line where you can you know point to him and be like this is the path that my witch bolt takes Flaps are yeah, which bolt corner. spell you can super familiar because it comes it makes a connection between you and the target. Well the flaps in the tent are open, so if I rotate over here, I'd be able to see them, right? Sure. Okay, I'll just do that and... Oh wait, yeah, he... no, 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 no. I'm sorry, cause cause the flaps like how he Arn didn't take the time to like tie them up. So like yeah. he, he opened them and came in and then they fell back in. I'm so sorry. Yeah, just 
to be fair, I, I do kind of agree. I, I don't I don't see a way that you can just shoot to the, the tent. If the if the flap was open, into the tent, then, into the doom. Then 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 I'd be all about it. But like I just realized that Arn had to lift it open, but he didn't tie it up. So it, if I could, it's a canvas tent, right? Yeah, canvas. you can just shoot through it. You can use a spell that doesn't need line of sight, just like fireball, firebolt, or something. But uh, well, it, it... I can stab through the tent with my rapier and then step away because he won't be able to. He can't attack me, and he wouldn't see it coming, right? I, it, I, I'd it, say it so. Would, that makes it sense. Would, it would be at advantage because he would be unaware of you as an attacker, and uh, you could step away without technically provoking an attack of opportunity since he would still lack line of sight to you. Since I know that's where he is, I'm going to and try and stab his dummy. Oh, holy <laughs> shit. Oh my god. Wow. Did you just throw your sword away or throw it into the tent? I don't know what. Oh, I I forgot though that you're also like attacking blind, um. So so that should have negated it down to neither advantage nor disadvantage. But that's fine. It doesn't really matter. This point. I know where he's standing. I can see him on the other side. Uh, right. But uh, you're you're still not looking at him as you attack. You know. I'll move back there, and I will tell Electo that he is throwing fire and things are going crazy in there since I know that's happening at least. Yeah. I will at least accomplish something positive on this turn. Okay. Uh, we're going to go with Shatter. Um, would Since he has to make a constitution save and Drago's missed him, he still doesn't know that we're outside of the tent, so would he possibly make that at disadvantage? Um, I, I don't. Sorry. sorry. It's I'm okay if to... not. I just wondered. so uh, you you the want to gonna blow. you you want to attack with what? I was going to use shatter and just direct it at him. Okay, but you need to have line of sight to him. Uh, Please. I don't know because shatter you. It's like a uh, you kind of place it. He he can just place it like right outside the tent. Uh, like the wall. Oh, I and forgot. It'll still it's explode. an area of effect. Yeah, it's an AOE, so I, I don't think. Yeah, it's a ten foot radius, so I would just use my ring to make sure that it doesn't hit anybody else in there, and I'm just targeting him. Yeah, ten foot radius sphere center centered on that point must make a Constitution saving throw. So, uh, yeah, uh, basically, um, a ten foot radius sphere would look like this and if you if you place it uh like that um you would also hit you and drago so we'll move but, it, we'll move it over a little there we go and remember he has his ring they can uh oh they can choose. oh that's right yeah so you you can yeah. just like be like yeah just you can drop it right on the tent and would it yeah. damage as well because i would love to get this tent out of the way yeah that's oh, true uh, yeah yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, so just fucking uh, de demolish this. But tent. but unfortunately, it does say. Oh, well, let me just take a look again. I, I wanna, I wanna make sure I get this right. Okay, so each creature makes a Constitution saving throw. Non-magical object not being worn or carried takes damage if it's in the spell's area. Yep. So uh, you'll just like shred the tent to pieces. Sweet, let's do it. Okay. So he'll need to make a. Um, yep. PC. So so you target him. Control left click. Yep. And then under shatter, where it says the save. Yep. Nice, he failed. Why did it say I had advantage? That's weird. Huh. Whatever, uh, it doesn't really matter, I guess. I, 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 yeah. And 
Also, I'll do this and I'll pack a power surge in there. Okay. Uh, don't forget to, yeah. Nice. And the tent just like rips apart from the force of the shatter. So then, yeah. He's... Yeah. And as, as the chunks rain down like confetti, you can see uh, the, the body of Darren like ripple from the attack in just like this weird jelly like way. Right, it's my turn. And then I say, he's a monster. And I charge him. And I slash him with my long sword as I'm charging him. Oof. Oh, you know what I forgot in the last round? I have two attacks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh, too late. I yeah, forgot about that. No, I haven't I gotten forgot. mine. <laughs> okay, at least one hits. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the damage. 14, and I'm going to pop another smite off. Again, uh, like electricity, like a bright white light uh, shines from my sword. And as soon as I hit him, you kind of hear like a lightning bolt, like a crackling sound. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. <laughs> and then, um, what else can I do? No, I think that's going to be it. I don't want to leave his range. Or you know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm going to stand here and rotate. And uh, that way my friend Logan can have some uh, advantage on his turn. And I say, Logan, attack him now. Okay, I wanted to see if maybe I could make an insight check or something to see if looking at him... And based on what I experienced, is do I get the impression of evil or just something beyond my comprehension? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and roll an insight. Not in-game, but like in D&D, &D, these things are very chaotic. Like they're very, they have a very chaotic aura to them. So, uh, yeah, he, he seems, uh, as though he's, he's, um, what would be the right word? Uh, like, elating in the chance to, like, kill you. Oh, okay. that's what I wanted to make sure. Because yeah, yeah, pretty evil. <laughs> there's a small part of me that was thinking maybe he's like an avatar or something bigger and better that's not exactly evil, just greater than us. And I didn't want to just cut him down. But now that he's relishing this, then he's in the longsword. Just like I taught you. Come on. Good hit. Ah, there we go. And there. Okay. Why did it do two dice? That was... Yeah, that weird. is pretty weird. I only it counted, counted it as a critical. That's why. Strange. I don't know why. Unless the hit were high enough to count as a crit. No, it, throw it? a crit is a natural 20. I'm not sure why it did crit, though. That is weird. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so it would have been 8 plus 3. 3, 11. so it's 12. Yeah. 11. Oh, and I can use Flurry of Blows. Let me just do that. Uh, two unarmed strikes. Okay, that's not going to hit. And the second elbow. Uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. So it was 16 nice. altogether. The last was bludgeoning, though. So if I do finish him... No, he's not finished. Never mind. He's still standing. Yeah, move. Okay, I you, guess it's his turn now. You did forget to move, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Move here. And uh, now, surrounded by you guys, uh, I I drop all pretenses and Transformers. assume my slot form. 
and upon assuming my my slot form uh i um become a terrifying uh oh shit uh green real quick green yeah slot? yeah what color is he yeah. i was gonna i was uh the yeah. green slots are kind of like the necroman yeah kind. yeah yeah yeah, so uh, he is he is a green slot, and uh, he uses his um, innate spells to cast fear on all of you. I think. Oh shit! What's his name? I think I can target all of you. Each creature in a 30-foot cone. Damn it. Okay, so I'm going to have to check my... S oh, yeah, I'm okay. I eat an attack of opportunity in order, me, right? in order to step over here, I think. Let me check my 30-foot cone to uh, just uh, make sure... Because I want to try and get as many of you as possible, obviously. So, if I step right here, yeah, I can get all three of you. So, instead of stepping there, I'll step here. That way I'm only taking one from Logan. Okay, so I can just go ahead and roll? Yes. There we go. Ah, perfect. Yes. But now Thanks, I unleash my cone of fear from my clawed green slot hand at the rest of you. Alrighty. Is it a wisdom save? Uh, I got it. it. It'll automatically do all this. Oh, okay. Yeah, all good. Uh, success, fail, ah, success, Arn. Drago save. You uh, are... If, if the DC is 12, uh, my aura does give me a plus 3 to my uh, saving throws. Uh, the DC is uh, 12. Oh, wait, but that only gives me an 11. But that gives an 11. <laughs> uh, uh, Dang it. I was just going to say that, but it only gives you an 11. So, uh, you are now fearted uh, ah! uh, for... The next um, ten rounds. Ten rounds. Yeah. I, I, do I get to save? Uh, so you um, must take the dash dash action and move away from me by the safest available route on each of your turns, unless there is nowhere to move. If you end your turn in a location where it doesn't have line of sight, then then you can make a saving throw, and on a success, the spell ends. So okay. You, so you have to hide. You have to go hide from me. Got it. Sounds good. I'll do that. And then I failed to fear in any of the rest of you, so that stinks. And I will. Uh, Pass my turn because that's my turn. What does it look like? Does he open his, or he like like a black mist comes out of his hand or something, or what happens? I think it's the transformation. Witnessing it made us all have to save. Yeah, and then yeah. and then yeah. as he stretches out his hand, like basically a wave of like uh, mirage, you know, yeah, like, like that, unknown that magic, heat, like that, a weird that yeah, heat yeah. that heat you know, thing where like the wavy, like just this wavy thing that disrupts the visuals of everything, like courses through for a second and you find yourselves like, you know, having an irrational thought of fear for a moment. And then, and then Alecto and Dragos, you quickly 
uh, pull yourselves together and you're like, what? Psh, that's just a, that's a stupid thing to think. And then, and then, uh, uh, Arn, unfortunately that fear begins to take a hold of you and you're irrationally afraid of this green slot now to the point where you have to run away. Uh, Zima uh, comes out to see what the hell is making so much noise. Gus and Gary peek out of their tent and they're like, what the hell, man? Or Gus and Greg or <laughs> Gary and Greg peek out of their tents and they're like, what the hell, man? You know, what's going on? But they're too drunk to like tell that the green slot is there and they just see like the tent all blown to pieces and everybody like fighting. Kung Fu fighting. Yeah, exactly. And Gus is still passed out by the fire, so he is just like passed out by the fire. But Tusky comes charging to Electo's side. Did I know that you tried to fear us, or would I just sort of guess that? Happened? Oh, I mean, you know that I did like something. Uh, you know, some kind of power spell was unleashed, but I didn't have to like chant or do the shit that Electo does. So, like, you're not really sure, you know, like what kind of spell or whatever it was. Yeah, these but, these things have a like innate spell casting. It just comes right. Out of them. Right. But, right. but I have an idea that Arn is scared because I could. Yeah. Put... Yeah, and and you definitely know that it was from when this thing like stretched out its hand and that wavy shit came out of it and you were like what is going on and then like you know so yeah you you know what's going on to that extent you just don't know that it was a fear spell per se but you can start to put two and two together because i i could go up and put heroism on arn and then i would he would be done oh yeah go ahead and roll arcana at disadvantage though because it's chaos that's a good idea Oh, terrible. So, uh, yeah, uh, no, you, yeah, you, you don't, uh, recognize it enough to be able to like counter it with heroism. I saw but, once, but once Arn starts running away, then you can be like, what, what you need, son, is some heroism. So instead, I'm going to use unsettling words on the, uh, nasty guy here. Okay. Bonus. Did you have to walk up to me to cast that? Or to use I inspiration? Would have, yeah, I would have to touch you. Okay, so you should move up where you were, right? right. No, I'm not doing because I don't know what happened to you. So I don't... I can't oh, do okay, I see. He's going to use cutting words instead. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. I'm going to cast uh, for my action. I'm going to cast blindness or blindness and deafness on him. Okay. And then, yeah, I applied the negative, but I still succeeded. Right, Electo's gonna kill it. Yeah, Electo, don't forget your bardic inspiration, by the way. You should use it here. How much is that? Is that a D eight? Uh from from uh Dragos it's a D six. Okay. And I can add that to my attack roll, right? Well, uh Dragos, um you you should let me double check. Yeah, he's he's got an effect that he can add to you to put the bardic inspiration on you. Ooh, okay. And then it'll and then it'll automatically apply. Oh no, that's iron. 
I put it on him. Oh, you put it on him too? Oh, too. He should. He has it as well. Okay, yeah. I gave him. Okay, I am going to try. Let's see. Um. Let's use up my last second level spell and I'll just do another. I mm. know I'm going to try ice knife at second level. Okay. Hey, you hit. Okay, so that's the first damage. And then he needs to make a save. Which is right there, yep. Failure. And for good measure, I'll use my last power surge. Okay. Oh, you broke his concentration. I'm not scared anymore. Yep. <laughs> oh, that was perfectly played, too, because it's your turn now. Ha-ha! Yep, so as as Electo's ice knife slices through the air, the slod is forced to raise his scaly arm uh like lumpy and and uh the ice knife bursts against it, but he loses sight of of Arn and like there's something about like his third eye being in contact with him or whatever that powered the the chaos magic that was fearing him. Perfect. In that, like, in that instant moment, like in an anime, he puts his hand, his arm over his head, and I snap out of it and immediately react like a true warrior and slash him. <laughs> yes, but like in anime, it takes three episodes and there's a whole lot of dialogue about, like, how in the ancient past they were, like, friends and now they're enemies and... <laughs> no! I, I miss! You're just like, yeah, just hit him. Yeah, that, again. I, I, that's that's a again. that's a very um poor uh role there. But Dang not as poor it. as that one. Oh my god. I even had Bardic Inspiration. <laughs> yeah, that I'm just too scared, guys. Sorry. So as you slash at him, he brings up his his clawed arms and blocks your sword with his very arm. And I say he's too strong. But in my head, like an enemy, of course. Okay, there's like a, there's a zoom in on my eyes, and I just say, he's too strong. Can Logan, you go please back save in me. time and kill your own grandmother before you were born? No. Her kung fu is too powerful. Logan, if you get under uh, between me, me and him... How, let me try to do this. I'm going to run up to him and get him with the death bomb. Hold on. With the death punch? Up. Oh, with, uh, what is it called? Yeah, inflict wounds. So I hit yeah. cast, and I drag it over. Or do I hit attack and drag it over? There you go. There we go. And damage. Holy. No, no, not, not that many. It should have been only half that. It'll be the first three. I don't know why I did that again. Oh, do you have critical uh, ticked off in the top right? Is no, it's it's that? it's a it's a one time thing. Oh, that why is it doing critical damage to him? Uh that I do not know. Because every um, both of his spells did critical damage. Yeah, I that, yeah, yeah. I have no idea. I don't see anything clicked anywhere. And and I don't I don't know like what it is because he's not vulnerable to anything. Uh but um maybe it's my dice when i put the spell in i mess something up i don't know it'll be what 11 well no, 21, there, there should there shouldn't be anything i i'm pretty sure i did something with the spell not you so let me uh just double check here we're doing inflict wounds and 3d10 necrotic and... well the first three damage he rolled were uh 
21, so he should have only took 21 damage there. Yeah, okay. there's, there's one. So I'm, uh, I'm not sure if he's still dead. If he only 17 uh, less. Uh, so it'll say exceeded hit points by 11. So if he took 17 less, then he'd have six hit points left. Yep, there you go. Oh, son of a you almost got yeah, him, dude. So there, there you go. Wait, uh, wait, you're offhand. As you, as no, you I stretch can't. out oh. your hand and send a prayer to your god, uh, you touch him, and he is drained of some of his life, but he is still standing. And then... Oh, he's going to get a turn. Damn it. And then he uh, is going to multi-attack and... Do two claws and a bite to, uh, I don't know. Is, is any of you, like, kind of damaged? Iron a little? Logan, not at all. I mean, uh, Logan just hit him. I don't know. I don't yeah. know if he's a reactionary creature. He might just uh, react. Yeah, I'm trying kind, to punch him right in the kind heart. Kind of. I mean, it's not. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to attack Logan anyway because Iron's wearing a lot of heavy armor and it really is, like, starting to piss me off, so. <laughs> I, I mean, as the slad, you know, like he he doesn't he doesn't want to keep clawing at armor, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. By the way, I, I, in Google, when I was looking for a picture of a slot, I typed in green slot, and Google said, um, "We're showing you pictures of green salad." <laughs> <laughs> like it tries nice. to like it assumed I was looking for salad instead of slot. C -c Critical hit. You got a crit. Oh but no! It's one so. Ooh, you were heavily damaged as the monstrous abomination claws and bites at you, taking a chunk out of your forearm. Zima sees okay, all this going on and screeches and flies into the sky. Uh, Gary kind of stumbles forward and draws his sword, but, like, he un unbuckles his pants and they fall around his waist. Nice one, dude. Greg is like, hey, why you, you stop that right now? And he stumbles forward and tries to grab Logan. Well, it doesn't look like their boss anymore. It looks like no, a monster. He, yeah, but he's seeing double vision, so like, oh, okay, he's, he he doesn't know what the fuck is going on, so he just tries to grab you, but he's got disadvantage because he's drunk. Fucking dumbass! There's a giant frog monster in front of him. <laughs> I would have gotten okay, a twenty, just... but I was drunk. You just use acrobatics. Yeah, you can. But then I got high. But then I got high. Hold on, roll. Try this again. I mean, I had a chance, kind of, but no. I just duck. Yeah. So I go to grab you, and, and you're like, you, you you do your drunken kung fu where you just let it roll, you know, right off of you. You're like, get out of here. Uh, Gus continues to snore by the fire. And Tusky, now that he sees all this, he's like, uh-uh, and he steps in front of uh, Electo and Dragos and like stomps his feet and lets the green slot know that he ain't going to be uh, attacking his owner. His friend, not his owner. Yeah. Dragos, do it. Side. You can see under his legs. He's yeah. gigantic. Yeah, he's an elephant. Okay, I'm going to try this again with the uh, unsettling words again. And this time I'm going to use Toll the Dead. Toll that dead. Ooh. Holy. <laughs> so I failed. <laughs> Epically. And as your, your spell cuts into me, 
you can see me clinging to life. Did that not kill him? I thought he only gained 6 it's HP and it. that just did 7. Yeah, but then it was my turn. Oh, oh you bastard. heal? I yeah. didn't know that. Regenerated. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I should have been describing that. Yeah, you guys have been watching him regenerate from your oh. wounds, like pretty significantly. 10 hit points each round. Oh, dang. Even necrotic, too. Like, even the... the that's pretty yeah, nothing yeah, has not, shut, it shut it off. off. You've, you've hit him with, you know, different stuff. And... Okay. I am... I see that he's looking, you know, pretty bad, even though he did heal himself a bit. That he still is looking pretty rough. So, I am going to walk up to him. And I'm just going to use Shocking Grasp. Oh, it still has my damage as 1d8. Hold on, let me fix it. Because now that I'm higher than 5th level, it should be... Oh. Here. Yeah. Do, oh, do you got it? Otherwise I can help you with that. I'm sorry, I updated yeah, all of your spells, but I forgot that some of the cantrips actually deal more damage. If you could help me, that would be great. Yeah, so it says... Reaches 1d8 when you reach 5th level. Yeah, that's what it is. 1d8 lightning. Oh, no, I think it was 1d8. Oh, 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 increases by 1d8 when you reach 5th level 2d8. I'm a dumbass. I'm sorry. I, I, I was, like, just trying to speed read that shit. There you go. Same with Firebolt. That should be 2d10. Dang it! How do I miss when I'm, like, right there? I don't know. How did you miss? I grabbed, like, his sleeve and not him. <laughs> yeah. You go to shocking grasp him and, uh, you, you ended up just grabbing part of his loincloth. Gross. Yeah, it actually is kind of gross. Now that he's transformed back into his slod form, there's a bit of moisture that you're not even gonna... Think about what it is. <laughs> okay. Let's see what I can do. Again, two attacks. Okay, that's oh, a hit. Nice. That should not be a hit. <laughs> and then... Here we go. Oh, come on! Oh, oh that's enough. It's okay. Oh, I'm I dying. slash him in, like, the... Let's say on like the ankle, right? I kind of yeah. give him a slash, and then he falls to one knee, and he's dying. Yeah. And then just for good measure, I while he's on his knees, I jab the long sword into his neck. Okay. Oh no. man. It's okay. I I he jab missed. it in there, but he's he's dying anyway. But it's yeah. just it just looks cool. <laughs> oh man. Logan. Or I assume I'm sorry. Iron is that your turn? Hey. Yep, that's my turn. Okay, term. so I'm just going to just punch this thing until it dies. Okay. Uh, attack. Why did it roll like that? Advantage because you uh, are attacking an unconscious foe. Oh, okay, so it's supposed to. Okay, good. Yeah. So I did hit? Yeah. 16? Okay, yes, sir. Perfect. Okay, and then flurry of blows. Uh, Jesus, this. you're just pounding this thing. <laughs> I was going to keep hitting him with my same like metal arm. And stuff. Yeah, smash his head in. Yeah. The dead attack. Okay, hold on. I see what the problem is. It won't roll my dice if I'm holding the key to talk. For some reason. Oh. So I've been re-rolling everything. i got to release it. Hold on. So I guess it 12 misses and the 16 hits. Yep. And that's... Ah, oh, only four. It's okay. It. He, he he needs one more hit before he's, like, dead, dead. And if he's unconscious, he doesn't get his, his points back, does he? You're about to find out. Since I can move without an op attack, I'm just going to move. Good idea. Yeah. All right. 
you guys look at the eldritch abomination dying on the ground and it is not recovering its hit points regenerating you finish it off and look around badly wounded greg passes out after trying to wrestle logan to the ground and you guys uh know that there are many questions to be answered next time on dragons of starfall i want now we know why we have the name (laughs) yeah i want to thank you guys for playing i want to thank anyone who's watching and as always everyone good gaming it's about to get real